Welcome to my tutorial on how to use Tabletop Simulator to play Grand Archive. I'm Amphi, the developer of the Grand Archive Fracturized Tabletop Simulator mod. Fracturized is the most popular and comprehensive mod available right now for Grand Archive, and this video will show you how to use it. Let's get started. First off, you'll need to subscribe to Grand Archive Fracturized. I've dropped the link in the video description. Choose the two-player version or the four-player version as you prefer. Open up Tabletop Simulator and choose Grand Archive Fracturized from the Workshop Games list. Once you've loaded into the game, the first thing you need to do is sit into one of the seats. Click on your name and click on the seat that you want to sit in. Next, click Import Deck. You'll need to paste in a URL to the deck you want to play. Fracturized can import from any Grand Archive deck building website or any tournament report website. You can customize your sleeves and playmat here, but for now, let's just press import and see our deck. Our main deck, material deck, and sideboard have all appeared on our playmat. Let's go through some common actions. First, you'll have to shuffle your deck. Our helpful mascot, Risey, will remind you if you haven't done it yet. To materialize your spirit, let's look through the material deck to find it. Drag it to the field, and there it is. If you want to look closer at a card, press Alt as you hover it. You're seated in front of your hand. Drawing cards is usually done by typing the number of cards you want to draw. Let's press 7. Now, we have 7 cards in hand. Let's say we've passed and it's the opponent's turn now and they're attacking us. We'll play this card, Tactical Retreat, to end the combat phase. In order to play Tactical Retreat, we'll need to pay three, or we'll reserve three cards into memory. Now, we could flip the cards over and drag them into memory, but Fracturized makes this a little easier. You're provided with a Quick Actions panel that you can get from this bag. It has some common game action helpers on it. Here, let's flip the three cards face down and then press Reserve. The cards go into memory. Tactical Retreat ends the combat phase and our champion becomes distant. So let's mark our champion distant. There's a bag with status tokens inside. They start as fracturized tokens, but you can change them to a different token by right-clicking and choosing the token from the menu. Let's change it to distant. If you prefer something a little more understated, you can use these smaller Go pieces to mark the cards. They work the same way. Let's say it's turn two now. The first thing I want to do is leveling up. Let's look in our material deck and find our champion. Right click the deck and press search. In this video, I'm playing Diana, Aether Dilettante, and my champion is distant, so I'll also need to find an Aether Wing. Materialize Diana level one by putting her onto the field. Now we have to pay for her. In order to do this, we can banish from memory. Press the Banish 1 button, and a card from memory is randomly banished. If you don't like the Quick Actions panel, another way is to select all the cards in your memory, press G to group them, shuffle them by pressing R, and then flip up the top card. With Diana's on enter, we'll get an Aether Wing, so let's put that onto the field too. Now it's the recollection phase. We're going to play Prudent Knock. I'll reserve two, draw two into memory, and load knock into the Aqua Mirage. Our memory looks like a mess right now. Fortunately, the reserve button can reorganize our memory so the cards are nicely spaced. This will allow us to look at the bottoms, holding Shift and Alt. Now that we're ready to recollect, there are two ways to do it, the manual way and the quick way. For manual users, you can just group them and draw the whole thing into your hand by typing a high number, like 9. The quicker way is to just press the Recollect button. Draw for turn by pressing the 1 key over your deck. I'm going to attack with Diana now. We're going to have to rest her to attack. Mouse over Diana and press E to rest her. Oops, she didn't turn all the way. This is because TTS has the rotation amount set to 15 degrees by default. You'll want to set it to 90, so you can rest cards quickly and easily. Okay, 
Let's say our attack went through. Aquamirage Whisper needs to track its durability now, so let's get some dice. Right click to set the die to durability dice. Then press two over the die to set its value to two. Now we're tracking our durability correctly. We'll also send Prudent Knock to the graveyard. We have an on hit effect to resolve. The Aqua Mirage Whisper is going to let us glimpse four on hit. So let's use the glimpse function. Press the glimpse one button four times. The glimpse cards are drawn into a second hand-like zone. Now you can use the buttons on the cards to place them back into the stack quickly at the top or the bottom. If you prefer, you can search the top four cards like this. You can rearrange the cards, pull out ones you want to send to the bottom, and place them back on top. To place cards on the bottom of a deck easily, hold both mouse buttons as you drag. You can also use this quick bottom area here. Cards dropped on it will go to the bottom of the deck. We've covered mostly everything about normal cards. Next we'll look at some convenience functions for double-faced cards. Double-faced cards have normal backs when they're in your hand or deck. When you flip a double-faced card over on the field, it automatically switches to a mode where you can see both sides. If it goes to your memory or back to your material deck, it switches back. There are actually three states, however. The third one lets you see the cards back without letting your opponent see the identity of the card. This is useful for learning the cards if you're not too familiar with what's on the back side of a fate stone. You can use page up and page down to switch manually. Finally, let's talk about generated cards. Fracturize is smart enough to identify the summoned or generated cards your deck will need and put them in this little bag here. But sometimes a situation might come up where you need to summon or generate other cards. Maybe you accidentally deleted your spirit, for example. If so, you can use the iPad. Type the name of the card you want to create, click it, and then press Generate Card. The card will appear. When you're done with your games, you can press GG Go Next. The play space will be reset, and it will even remember your sideboard choices. That's more or less it. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much to the community for using my mod and for all your fantastic feedback. With so many new players starting GA every day, there are a ton of new ideas coming my way all the time. And so I'm excited to hear from you. Don't be shy. Look me up on the Discord and tell me if you have feedback. And of course, if you want to help me out, you can rate the workshop mod using the link in the description so that more people can find it. Thank you so much and happy playing.